Brian Dolesky with Able Distributors. Today it's all about Bosch air handlers. We are gonna stock two different models. The Ultra, we're only gonna stock that in five ton. And then the standard 20s here, we're gonna have two, three, four, and five. So let's get into it. As you can see here, it's already got the A2L sensor wired already into the board. So there's no interface board. There's nothing you have to do. So it makes it super, super easy. You are gonna notice on this that there's one more temperature probe connected to the liquid line just near the TXV. And what that does is it checks the temperature of that coil so that you get a slower start or a delayed fan on heating or after a defrost. So that's the new stuff. Obviously this runs on uh, 454. Obviously it's got a built-in TXV. Obviously it's got built-in wires, four wires going to the outdoor unit and a bunch of wires because you could go two-stage heat, two-stage cool going to the thermostat. They do give you the wiring harness to convert this to a communicating between here and the outdoor unit in case you don't have four wires. It doesn't have all the functionality of the Ultra, but it's pretty darn close. So let's get into it. Again, this is a 20 sear. The Ultra is actually considered a 19X. This is the 20X. Very, very similar. But let's get into the heat kit next because this little, this is what the heat kit looks like if you've never seen one. This bracket to mount the breaker and the breaker goes with L1 and L2 facing up. There's a little tab and I'll get into this more close up that pulls up to lock this and remove the breaker. Positioning this, there's holes pre-drilled here and there's holes pre-drilled in the bracket. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you line it up right because when you go put on the door, you obviously you want the breaker so you can flip it on and off. And it, it, you still need a breaker in the panel. This is more of a, an emergency shut off so you can shut off the power while you're working on it. So let's get into installing the heat kit. It's very, very similar to the Ultra. I'm gonna show you that one too. This one's just a little bit different. All right, well, we're back at it. So when you're installing the heat kit, and again, I know I reiterate this a lot, but you're gonna to want to have bare minimum a 10KW heat kit in these things, because if you use the heat pump for heating at all, at some point it's gonna go into defrost, or at some point it's not gonna be enough, or at some point it's gonna want emergency backup heat. The electric heat kit, 10KW, 20KW, watch the size because there's limits on what you can do. The three ton drive, you can go up to, I think, 15 uh, kW. Bigger than that, you can go up to a 20 kW. If you've never seen a heat kit, this is what it looks like. That's your heating element. This is the sequencers. They're already wired. The breaker's already wired. You're gonna notice that the breaker has big leads going to the sequencers for the heat strip. And it's got two thinner leads, one red, one black. These power these two wires here. So if you're gonna use this just for air conditioning, and again, it's not a bad way to go. A Bosch heat pump is a modulating AC. It's a perfectly good piece of equipment. You're just gonna power these two wires that powers the board, powers the blower, no heat gives you AC. It'll give you a heat pump too. So let's say you had this as supplemental heat. And then when the depths of winter would come, you'd use a boiler or something like that. You could absolutely power just this. But if you're gonna install a heat kit, there's a panel back here. There's two actually stacked on top. You, with a 10KW, you're gonna remove one of those panels. The screw holes for the door for that panel are gonna be the screw holes that go right here. And you're gonna take these two leads and wire nut them to these two leads. So then, your L1, L2 come in here, powers everything. Heavy leads go into the heat, the big draw, light leads go into the board, you're golden. When you mount this little bracket, you're gonna wanna make sure it's in the right spot. A, your breaker clips in, again, L1, L2, the blanks will be up. Make sure that you tuck the wires in out of the way so there's nothing pinched. There's a little, I'll call it a, a, a clip. So you clip it down on the bottom, you reach a screwdriver in, a pen or a pencil or anything, 
lift up on this blue tab that allows you to clip it in and remove it if you ever need to remove it. There's no force in it, there's no jamming it, no hitting it with a hammer, it's not gonna work. When you mount this bracket and then you mount your breaker, the reason you wanna make sure the holes are lined up perfect is because you're gonna knock out one of these knockouts both if it's a 20kW or 15kW, one if it's a 10kW, and you just want it to line up. Now these are breakers, but ultimately you're gonna have a breaker in the panel for this. These are kind of just an emergency shutoff or a service switch so that you can kill power while you're working in here. So that's that. Off of this kit comes one more wire, and it's got a brown and a white, and that's in the instruction manual. Tells you where it goes to the heat kit. That plugs right into the board, and that way the board controls when this goes, everything. So that's it. I mean, it's very simple. Again, the A2L sensor is already pre-wired. There's a temperature sensor on the liquid line. That's already pre-wired. You've got your thermostat wire and your outdoor unit wire up on top. That's all. Uh, very, very easy. You're going to see there's two banks of dip switches. Now those dip switches, again, very, very easily laid out in the manual. Those are for your blower speed, high and low. Your blower speed, you can set whether you have a W1 or W2 or, or both. Then you're going to have a dip switch on there for non-cool air or cool air. And all that is is a delay for when you're heating up the coil before the blower comes on. And the only other dip switch that's in there is you have the option to not use four wires, to use two wires, and you gotta let this board know whether you're doing that or not. That little wiring harness comes in the bag. So that's it. Heating kit, always a good idea. We're gonna stock these in two, three, four, five. We're gonna stop, stock the ultras just in five. Up next, I'm gonna show you how to put the heat kit into the ultra, and that's it. Really, really nice way to go. If you need an air handler, an electric heat, this is by far having all the A2L stuff built in. Easy peasy, the connections are easy, the size is nice. These are really, really nice pieces of equipment. Let's look at the Ultra and getting the heat kit in that next. Bosch Ultra Air Handler. Now this can communicate with the Ultra heat pump and you can use it non-communicating too, but the way you power this is a little unique. So it's got a red and black a wire here, very thin. So if you're not gonna do a heat kit, now after I say that, I'm gonna always say that you should put a heat kit on it Unless it's literally AC only, then don't worry about it. But if you're going to do this as a heat pump, you should really put a heat kit on it because if that heat pump goes into the frost, you're going to want to power some heat to offset that AC running. If the heat pump fails, the springs a leak, somebody hits it with a, a riding lawnmower or a plow truck, to have backup heat is kind of important. I would always go with backup heat, at least 10 kW. So no heat kit. You're just going to get to these red and black wire. Breaker in the panel, no big deal. It doesn't have a lot of draw because you're just powering this board and an ECM motor, pretty simple. When you put in a heat kit, there's two panels back here, an upper and a lower. You're gonna remove one panel if it's 10KW. You're gonna remove both panels if it's 20KW. So what we have here, forgive me, is a 10KW kit. So that's what the heat kit looks like. Now this would slide in side here these screws go with the same screws that you would remove this panel here gets mounted right up front it has pre-drilled holes you will notice that you're going to have to take the ground screw from where it is and I would bring it around and put it in with the ground that you're going to bring in from your power the screws will line up perfectly your breaker will hang with the wired side down and your load or your line side rather up your breaker clips in just like that the door has a knockout so you can get to the breaker with the door on and kill the power your power comes in here there's knockouts on the side 
half inch, three quarter, and one inch, so you're plenty good there. These two lighter gauge power wires will now go to the light gauge power wires that are already in the unit. The other thing you're gonna notice besides this, everything else is pre-wired, coming off the sequencers is a plug with one brown, one white. Now that attaches to the board using this little adapter. So this wire goes into the orange, the white end of this little adapter. On the back of the board, there's a terminal that says two heat kit. This plugs in there. So now we have a smart unit. The board dictates when to power up the heat units. The breakers power the heating strip and the board. So you just bring power into here. You don't double feed it. You don't bring power to this and to the originals. These go to here. This gets plugged onto the board. This gets inserted in the back and it's good. Whether you take the top slot or the bottom slot, it doesn't really matter if you're doing 10 kW. I would probably go the top slot. It's just my preference. Either way is fine. Again, if this was a 20 kW kit, you're gonna see it's gonna be double high, double kit, more sequencers, and then the third wire of this little adapter comes into play more because it'll sequence between 10 and 20 kW. So that's it. That's how you hook up the heat kit inside the Ultra Air Handler. And this is the 19X, and this pairs perfectly with the 19 Sear Ultra Cold Temperature Heat Pump. It's a match made in heaven. We do have the standard air handlers. I'm also gonna do a video on how to install a heat kit in there. It's very, very sim similar. It just doesn't have this adapter and the board's a little different and it's a little smaller. That video will be coming up. Brian Dolesky, Able Distributors, thank you.